It is July 30th, Saturday, July 30th, and this is your daily financial news. A couple of quick announcements. Did you know that Saturday is a very slow day for YouTube? That is why a lot of the YouTube creators don't have Saturday content. But hey, when you commit to doing something seven days a week, you have to do it seven days a week. And because I try to be different, I make Saturdays special at one rental at a time. We're going to do two things today. One, we're going to do a live Q&A at 8 a.m. or at about 28 minutes. We're going to do your questions, my answers. We will go for a full hour. And then at 9 o'clock, we will do a deep dive for 90 minutes on a key topic. Today's key topic is with my Friday expert, Ty. We are going to talk about pre-foreclosures. Folks, I do not believe pre-foreclosures are a great way to find deals today. At one rental at a time, we are not doing things for today. We are looking ahead. We are looking around corners. We are trying to skill up right now. And again, when I look at my real estate tool belt, I do not possess this skill. I have never done it and won't pretend to be an expert, but I can find one and we can learn together. So if you're one of my students, I've sent the Zoom invite on Teachable. You do have to check a little box that says receive emails and two in our very private Facebook group. It is in there. I will see you at 9 a.m. You're going to learn. I'm going to learn. And then best of all, we give it a free to you, Mr. and Mrs. YouTube viewer, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., you will get to benefit it. If you're one of my students, you get to interact, ask questions. But yes, we give it away on YouTube tomorrow, 9 a.m. So that should be fun. So again, Saturdays, lots of people take it off. I make Saturdays special. If you like that, like, subscribe, comment, join the family. Let's see what's going on. Um... So we talked about the deep dive pre-foreclosures today. Next week, we have ADUs, accessory dwelling units, a way to make more money, a way to house hack, lots of great ideas. If you know my channel, I'm trying to do an ADU right now and failing miserably. So I went out and found an expert. We are going to learn. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to be better. Hopefully, you will be better next week. I think that's on August 6th. So let's have some fun. Uh, let's, oh, thank you. I meant to do this yesterday and I just forgot. I think it was two days ago. I put out a video basically saying I quit or I'm quitting YouTube or something like that. It was basically a reaction to a comment about, hey, we're, you can't help anyone. I don't believe that. I believe focused daily content, looking to provide motivation, not fear, learning with you. I think that helps. But I wanted to hear from you, and you all delivered. That one video has gotten over 600 comments. 99% of them are amazing and thankful, and I appreciate it. If I ever have a bad day, I will go through those comments and feel better. Yes, there are some haters. Yes, more people got blocked. It's okay. It's my channel. You know, I don't like what you're saying. If you're nasty, you're rude, you get blocked. And then I don't have to see it again. It's pretty cool. All right. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't know what else to say. You blew me away, far exceeded my expectations. All of you are amazing. Thank you for leaving comments. Many of you said this is the first comment you've ever left. Thank you, thank you. That means the world to me. Um, I thought we did good work here, but that really proved that we did. And I'm not going anywhere. So let's keep going. I don't normally do this. In fact, I don't believe I ever have done a week in review. I do lots of week aheads and what's coming, but I very rarely look backwards. This is a week we have to look back on. This week we need to look back on because things are weird. They're just weird. So what are some things that I took away from last week? Well, we had the Fed meeting on Tuesday, and we had the Fed announcement on Wednesday. 75 basis point 
raised, which we called on this channel months ago. We got what we expected. Cool. Then if you watch the conversation I had with Matt, the mortgage guy that came out on Wednesday, I hoped, I prodded, I almost begged Powell to come out like a super hawk. Big talent, big beak, be nasty in your comments. Well, he came out like this big, you know, fluffy dove and all of this nonsense. And what happened? The stock market up 4.5% in three days. Crypto up like 10%. Risk on. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I look forward to asking my two stock experts, Dan on Sunday and Taylor on Monday. What the hell went on? Should be interesting. But again, I think that Powell looks at Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday's stock market action. And he's kicking himself. I, well, let me say this. I hope he's kicking himself. The stock market's up 4.5%, folks. We just had a negative GDP print. Okay, that was Friday, I think. Or was it Thursday? I think it was Thursday. Negative GDP. Second in a row. The economy is shrinking. Is it a recession? Is it not? Who cares? GDP is shrinking. The economy is shrinking. Jerome Powell, big fat dove. Thursday, GDP validation is negative. Stock market up. Why? Because again, the stock market is looking as bad news, shrinking GDP, as good news. Right? You got me? We've talked about this on the channel before, right? We are going to enter a market where bad news is good news. And I think the stock market is leaping to that example. So again, I don't get it. I am so happy I have no money in the stock market. I am a macro economy guy. I don't get the stock market. I don't understand. I was, you know, I will get in if the S&P gets to 3,100. Who knows if that will happen, but it's fun to watch. Don't have any money in the game, up or down. Doesn't matter to me, but wow, pretty, pretty crazy. Next up. Uh, we talked about GDP. Well, how about PCE, personal consumption expenditures? Largest month-on-month -month increase at 1% since 1982. Just in case you don't know about the early 80s, anytime you are taking an inflation, a monthly inflation metric and tying records from the early 80s, that's a bad thing. Not good. So again, we got that. Again, bad news is good news. I don't get it. I don't understand. We had some earnings, tech earnings, right? The FANG names. I think you could say, what was it? Apple was good. Amazon was good. I think Google was okay. Facebook, not so good. There's one more. Whatever. Generally speaking, earnings have been good. I read a metric last night that 75% of the S&P 500 companies that reported have beat expectations. I don't really care about the quarter, it's the future. What is going on? And more and more companies are talking about passing on costs. We have to pay attention to this. I think inflation is going to prove to be more sticky. I think Wall Street is wrong. And I say that again as somebody who has zero money in the game. So I don't hurt if I'm wrong. But inflation's about the Chipotle. Chipotle released this week. Chipotle told us, first, there's a bifurcation in their consumer base. Think about that. Chipotle, what's a burrito, like 13 bucks? Some of their customers have to stop going there. It's too expensive. That's a problem. Second, they said more price increases coming in August. We have seen companies eat margin. They're done. Procter & Gamble, same thing. Done eating margin. They are going to pass it on. The strong dollar is wreaking havoc around the world. In the S&P 500, it is hurting earnings as they convert foreign currency to dollars. We are seeing countries who have dollar-denominated debt 
get crushed. This is a problem that probably gets bigger before it gets smaller. There's a lot of stuff going on. But yet again, the stock market wants to go higher. And I look forward to talking to my two experts, Dan tomorrow and Taylor on Monday, because I don't get it. I don't get it. Don't understand. I'm a macro guy, the charts, the trends, man, crazy times. But then we have Walmart and now Best Buy. What did Walmart and Best Buy tell us? One, we've, they basically over-ordered. They took last year's trend in purchasing, extrapolated it to now, and the consumer said no. They are clearly still spending, right? We've talked about that. We talked about the K-shaped summer. But now people are buying services, experiences. We are done buying cardboard boxes. Again, very interesting. And Best Buy, same deal. Talk about technology being pulled forward like Dell and HP laptops. You don't need one every year. They last years. We pulled forward a lot. Maybe your household had one laptop going into the pandemic, but now you have three. It's a very interesting time. So again, lots of stuff going on. I believe the most unfortunate part of last week was Jerome Powell being a big fat dub. And in fairness to Jerome Powell, I don't think he was as big a dub If you asked him, I bet you he would say he was a hawk. But it doesn't matter what he thinks. It matters how the market reacts to his comments. And when he said, we are at neutral, which I disagree with. I think neutral is at two and three quarters to three. But he said, we're at neutral, problem number one. Problem number two says, is hey, based on economic data, we won't have to raise as much or something like that. Well, no kidding. You shouldn't be raising three quarters of a point forever. I think that's a logical statement, but not okay. So again, Jerome Powell, you missed again. Dude, you are turning into Arthur Burns 2.0. It might be time to resign. Go find somebody else who's got some balls. You're back. You're just weak. You are crushing Americans with your constant need to communicate. Walk up to the market. Kick it in the nuts. Let's have some pain so we can go forward. Stop ripping the Band-Aid off so slowly. So that was last week. Mortgage rates tank. Oh, one of the new experts that I was lucky enough to interview this week was from the Housing Wire. Uh, Logan, very long last name. I won't butcher it here, but you can find him in Housing Wire. Just type in Logan. He has a statement that says the housing market is savagely unhealthy. He is on record, and we talked about it, that the mortgage rates have to go up. And if they don't, and the mortgage rates come down, that housing could stay unhealthy. Watch this. Hopefully you can see this. Do you know what the 30-year mortgage rate was in mid-June? Mid-June. It was 6.03. Oop, three. 6.03, mid-June, 30-year mortgage rate, average, blah, 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 6.03. Do you know what it was on Wednesday morning? Wednesday morning, pre, pre pre-Fed rate rise, pre. This is before they raised rates. It was 5.54. Mortgage rates. We're down almost half a point since mid-June. Then the Fed comes out and says, you know what, folks? We're going to whack you with another 75 basis point move. By Thursday, do you know what mortgage rates were? Bananas. 5.22. They went down roughly a quarter point in a day. A day. That is not normal. And just to have some fun, what was mortgage rates on Friday? Five point one three percent. 
These are 30 year fixed best credit big down payment. You could probably get an arm in the fours. Folks, rates going down. If you if you want a balanced housing market, rates going down is not going to help that. That that's nuts. Rates are down almost. You know we're going to round up here, one point in six weeks, almost right. Point nine, right? Point nine zero, six point oh three, five point one three. That's point nine. Let's round to a percent. That is bananas. Do the. I don't know what to tell you. Housing got more affordable, right? Price, interest rates, and incomes. If interest rates fall 1%, housing is flat out more affordable. It just is. It's math. It's bonkers. It's wild to think about. Crazy. Just crazy. So a lot of the world is thinking about the Powell pivot. Again, I don't think Powell meant to do this, but he basically said, hey, basically what Powell said Wednesday, in my opinion, is yes, based on economic data, there is a path for us to slow raising rates. I've listened to Powell's answers a couple of times. I do not hear rate cuts, but my opinion doesn't matter. The stock market and the bond market says, we're going to get a big old nasty recession. The Fed is going to wimp out and you're going to cut rates next year. That's what the market says. I don't know. Do we hope they're right? Do we, I mean... In order for the Fed to, I mean, think about this logically, right? We've got CPI at 9.1. We've got PCE at 6% or whatever, 6.1. That's like a real problem. In order for the Fed to start cutting rates, we got to be in a nasty recession. I mean, be careful what we wish for, right? I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, So other things I noted in the last 24 hours, uh, AMD, advanced micro devices, actually passed Intel for market cap. Uh, I think that's the first time that's ever happened. So shout out to the folks at AMD. You are doing good work. Intel, dude, you're behind the boat, man. Yeah, your CFO said you're at the bottom. I hope so. I hope so. Next week's most important number is coming out on Friday. It will be the July employment data. I'm trying to figure out what the estimate is. I don't know what that estimate is. But again, remember, one of the reasons that the government says we are not in a recession is the job market. We created, roughly speaking, 2.6 million jobs in the last six months. What do you think we will do in July? I'm going to guess it's positive. I'm going to guess it's positive probably 250,000, maybe even 260. But I'm going to dig into that. I'm going to go get some more data because I think that's an important conversation to have. Consumer spending was up 0.1% in real terms. That word real is important. A lot of economic data is talked about in nominal terms. Think housing price, nominal. CPI in the PCE reading from Friday was up 0.1%. It was up much more than that nominally, but adjusted for inflation, PC or Uh, Consumer spending was up 0.1%. So that, again, that strips out gas, that strips out food inflation. It was still up 0.1%. Lastly, what is a housing uh, recession or a housing depression? Again, what I believe is happening right now, right like right now, is a housing depression. If you are paid commission on a transaction, it is going to get cut in half. I talked to two different real estate brokers in the last 48 hours, and both of them estimated that with one housing transaction, 15 people or more get a taste, get their beak wet. That's from agent, brokers, mortgage, uh, uh, title, escrow, appraisers. 15 people get a piece. So if we go into a market where transactions go down 30% this year, 50% peak to trough, There's going to be, if you're commissioned, it's going to feel like a depression. That depression in the housing market will lead to the recession that will absolutely be called Q3, Q4. Because again, the the, the silly economic PhDs are not going to call Q1 and Q2 a recession. We've talked about that for a while. 
So what does a housing depression in transactions mean? Home building will fall 25% or more. Existing home sales will fall 20 to 30% this year. Yes, folks, in the next five months. And refi demand will be down 80%. All of that stuff means less transactions, less origination. It is going to feel like a depression. Again, this is not meant to scare you. That's not what this channel is. It is to make you aware. Have you ask yourself, hey, if I'm in this business, what am I doing to prepare? And then as investors, you and I, one rental at a time, time to go hunting. Do the work. Figure out average. We are only buying great deals. You and I have no idea how long this depression will last, but I can tell you with confidence, there will be motivated sellers. They're really hard to find today because we got a lot of wish pricing and want to sell versus need to sell. It will become easier to find motivated sellers in August, in September, in October. Never stop doing the work. Never. Look at the market. Look at your buy box every day. Get after it. Only write great offers. Nothing at list price. Ask for closing costs. Ask for rate buy downs. We teach yield or cash on cash return here. So if you get somebody to pay your closing cost, your yield goes up. You ask somebody to buy down your rate, your yield goes up. I showed you how very easily you can take a 2% yield and get it to 6%. This is important stuff, folks. Do the work. Do the work. There's a sticker right there. Do the work. All right, folks, have an amazing day. Thank you for being here on Saturday. It is really slow on YouTube Saturdays. I don't care. We're going to keep going. We will do a live Q&A shortly and then our deep dive at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Ty, for doing that. I look forward to getting better myself. Bye.